Hi and welcome to OrthoZoom. Through the series of next videos, we will run some simulation sessions for the Viva part of the FRCS Trauma and Orthopedic exam. We found this part of the exam to be quite challenging, particularly for newcomers to the UK system. We do believe, however, that these videos are quite beneficial for anyone sitting for a trauma and orthopedic exit exam. So please subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with our videos. Okay, so um, this is a simulation um, I prepared with BGAD. Um, and in this, we want to uh, do two scenarios. Uh, the first will be how you could do a bad viva although you know all the information. Uh, and the second scenario will be how you could do a, a good viva. Um, so we'll start by Begad asking me. Hi, Ali. Um, Hi. So you're presented with this plain x-ray um, and this scenario of a 70-year-old female who's come to your clinic complaining of uh, more than two years of bilateral hip pain. Um, how would you proceed? Um, so this is an AP x-ray showing both hips. Uh, the obvious uh, uh, abnormality is that uh, this patient has bilateral severe osteoarthritis, particularly on the left side with um, uh, almost no uh, joint space, uh, femoral and uh, acetabular cysts. Okay. Uh, so, how are you going to manage that patient? So, with this level of arthritis, uh, I don't think we have any other option uh, than a hip replacement. Uh, so, yes, I'll offer her a hip replacement. Oh, you're a very brave surgeon. Are you going to jump to a hip replacement straight away? Um, no, I'll, I'll go first and you know, take history, um, see if she has any... Um, medical problems, uh, what medication she's on and how bad the pain is. Uh, maybe also see if uh, she has had any treatment before, like injections, uh, physiotherapy. Uh, well, she's generally well in herself. She's only got hypertension for which she takes pills and she's well controlled according to her GP. Um, and she has tried some physiotherapy on and off some over-the-counter painkillers, but they haven't managed to control her pain. Uh, the hip replacement. Yes, yes. I mean, yes. Uh, I'll I'll go with a hip replacement. Yes. Is there any other information that we'd like to know about the patient's activity, her uh, hobbies, her expectations? Yes, I, I'll, I'll ask her. You know about her the effect of the pain on her daily activities, hobbies, and. Uh, uh, well, she, she's, a, she's a keen golfer who, who enjoys uh, a golf course every weekend with her friends. But recently, she's been not able to, to go and play. Yes. Okay. Uh, I mean, if, you, you, if you, it's you affecting... Found, you decided to give her a hip replacement. Um, which type of hip replacement would you do? Cemented. Uh, you go for a cemented hip replacement. Any specific reason for that? Her age. Um, in 70 years, I I prefer a cemented hip. Um, why is that? Uh, to avoid um, any periprothetic fracture uh, uh, and uh, yeah, whether intraoperative fracture or postoperative fracture, and also I'm worried about her bone quality, so I don't want an uncemented one. Is there any evidence that supports your view? Yeah, the, the data the data from the National Joint Registry supports uh, cemented hips in um, all age groups and also in this elderly age group in particular. Okay. Um, what approach would you use and which, which implant are you going to give her? Approach. I. I mean, you could do anterior approach. You could do lateral approach. You could do. And I mean, you, you're you're the surgeon. Uh, you, you, patients on operating table. They're asking you during the team brief, which approach you're going to use. You're you're the consultant. I'll I'll use uh, lateral approach. Okay. Why do you prefer the lateral approach? Um, it has less incidence of dislocation than posterior, and 
I'm not used to the anterior approach, so um, I'll go for lateral. Okay. All right. And what 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 uh, prosthesis are you going to use? Uh, uh, I'm used to using a, uh, a CPT stem and uh, uh, and a uh, polyethylene uh, uh, Zimmer cup. Okay. Any specific reason why do you prefer these implants? Um, I mean, it's it's uh, it has good uh, good uh, track record, uh, mm -hmm. um, and it's widely used. Uh, okay. It's what I've also been trained on doing, so I'm okay. confident. Sounds good. Yeah, uh, fair enough. I think we've got already. Yeah. Two Time's up. Time's up. Yep. So what did what score would you give me, Miguel? I think you were hovering somewhere around the six, between five and six. Um, you, you, there is nothing that you said that was wrong. Um, all the information was actually correct. You, you you have the facts, but the whole time you needed two things: probing from the examiner to come up with the with the words to press on the buzzwords that the examiners want to hear. The second thing is that you need to clearly tell the examiner that you know your stuff, you know the facts. And, and I, think, I think you're making the point that with, <laughs> with the, if you're lucky enough, uh, if you're lucky enough in the exam to get a very easy case like this, which you probably will not get, but if you are lucky enough to get a very easy case like this, and a straightforward yeah. one. Yeah. Then, then you should you should nail it, and and I don't think anyone will accept you uh, uh, not just being able to fly through it. Uh, Absolutely, those are the cases where you would be aiming for an eight, a seven, yeah. or an eight, not just a lucky six. Um, yeah. uh, there are there are cases when you want to just come out with a five or a six, and we know that in the exam. Um, probably we, we were already talking about that before. Um, the stations, but this is a case, as you're saying, you should hit an eight, hit the buzzwords straight on. Do you want to try again? Do you want to try to do it? Yeah, sure, why not? Okay, um, so now Begad will um, uh, try to uh, do a better uh, job than the one I did. Um, tell me when you're ready. I will lead, yes, I'm ready. Okay, and then we've got Ahmed Sami with us, who's going to uh, give you a mark, uh, depending on how you've done. Okay, let's go. Okay, so you've got this 70-year-old uh, lady who's come to your hip clinic, complaining of bilateral hip pain for the past uh, three years. She's more symptomatic on the left. How would you proceed to manage this case? Well, I can see a plain radiograph uh, of the pelvis AP showing both hips with marked osteoarthritis, um, more pronounced on the left side, where I can see cystic erosions on the establer uh, side and the femoral head. Um, I would like to ask her more about her history, um, specifically for pain. Uh, where's the site of the pain? How is it affecting her activity of daily livings? It, the effect on her hobbies? Um, what's her previous activity level? Her comorbidities, any previous treatments, and what are her expectations today in clinic? Okay, so I'd she's- would like to make a focused examination of the hip regarding the range of motion limb length discrepancy, and I'd also, also like to examine the other joints. Okay, so she's, um, she's quite an active lady, but hasn't been recently because of her hip pain. Uh, comorbidities are the ones on the screen, so the hypertension, uh, which is well controlled, and she's had physiotherapy, she's had injections, uh, and she's here because she's expecting a hip replacement. Uh, she already had a discussion with her GP regarding that. Okay, that's brilliant. So, since she has tried all the non-operative measures and that failed to improve her symptoms, I would offer her a hip replacement. Okay. What uh, sort of hip replacement would you offer? An all cemented uh, total hip replacement. Um, I, my go-to hip would be the extra stem and a contemporary phalange cup. I would use a metal on polyethylene bearing surface, a 32 head, um, and I would operate through a standard posterior approach. Hmm. Okay, so why, why did you choose these um, things in particular? Well, cemented hips do well on the NGR data with a revision rate less than 5.5% in, in the past 15 years. Um, extra um, stem and contemporary cups 
uh, I would use because, again, they have good results on the NGR data, uh, less than 5% revision rates in 15 years. And they do have an ODEP rating of 13 A star. Mm -hmm. I'm aware that ceramic and polyethylene has marginally better results on the NGR data. But both ceramic and poly and metal and poly have excellent 15 year results with revision rates less than 5.5% in 15 years. Yeah. 32 heads, because as we know from the basic science, this increases the primary arc uh, of motion, and then there is lower incidence of dislocations. I would use a posterior approach, because this is the approach I've been trained to use. It gives me a good exposure, and with the proper capsular closure, um, you can achieve comparable dislocation rates to the other approaches. And there's recent evidence from North America to support this. Okay, that's uh, very good. Um, now, this lady uh, had a friend who had a hip replacement and that friend ended up staying in the hospital for uh, more than a month because of the complication. So she's asking you, uh, what are the risks of this surgery and uh, how likely is it to be a successful surgery? Oh, she, she ought to be worried. It is a big operation. It's a life-changing one, actually. Uh, but I will reassure her that it is a successful operation. Total hips are successful operations. Uh, up to 95%, which means 95 in every 100 patients, will be satisfied with the outcome and will do well. Only in five people out of every 100 who have a total hip operation, uh, they're either unhappy or develop a significant complication. The complications could be general complications like medical or anesthetic problems. So we will make sure that she has a, a good preoperative assessment when she comes to the um, uh, pre-op clinic, uh, assessment clinic with the anesthetist. We will optimize her before surgery. Other complications include things like blood clots in the leg, which might travel to the lung and become a fatal condition. So we, we keep her well hydrated throughout her hospital stay, get her quickly uh, mobilized out of bed, uh, give her elastic stockings and give her blood thinners <clears throat> to reduce the incidence of this happening. Infection rates, one in a hundred, not common, but could be serious if it becomes deep uh, and it might warrant further surgeries to get rid of the infection. Dislocations where the hip, the ball pops out of the socket. This can happen at the rate of one to two in every hundred patients. And when it pops out, uh, we, either, we can either pop it back in easily or it might warrant a revision surgery which means we, we redo her hip. Limb length discrepancies, uh, it's a common risk, but usually passes unnoticed because it's less than one or two centimeters, and it could be well correlated with the shoe lift. Uh, other things that can go wrong, like fractures of the bone while we're preparing them inside the operation or after the operation. Um, the general wear and tear of the hip, uh, which means loosening and- Okay, time's up. Yeah, very good. Okay, so uh, Ahmed, what do you think? Um, I, I think Beget did really well. I think he deserves a solid seven, borderline eight. Um, he seemed to be able to interpret the x-rays um, yeah, quite thoroughly. And then he proceeded to um, offering the patient a total hip replacement, knowing that she's exhausted her conservative treatment measures. Um, he seemed to be very well aware and familiar with the implant he's using, and he could back up that with um, evidence from the NGR. He's up to date with the, NG, with the um, NGR data. Uh, he used the posterior approach as the safe approach, and uh, he verified um, verified that. And then moving on to the complications, he acknowledged the fact that this is a big surgery and the patient has the right to worry. Um, he then went on to explain uh, professionally the complications uh, with their uh, relative uh, rates uh, of happening, uh, and how would we minimize uh, uh, the risks of such complications. Yes, I think, um, I think his uh, presentation of the complication was really outstanding. He, he put them in order of relevance to the patient, perhaps, and he gave, uh, gave numbers to most of them uh, in sort of understandable numbers, so not just percentages, but uh, uh, made it clear in plain terms. And he also gave the patient some, you know, some information about what he would do to try to minimize the risk. So I think that's uh, that's a perfect uh, answer, really, um, because this is where you could get it wrong and just start listing the complications, going general complications, local complications, early and and late. Um, but you need to listen to the question and hear the, what the question is saying is, you are addressing the patient. Uh, and I think that's what he 
he uh, really did remarkably well. Uh, so just to sum it up, um, <clears throat> if you're asked about what prosthesis, uh, you can use any prosthesis uh, you want, anyone you're comfortable with, uh, but you need to back it up. So you've got data from the National Joint Registry that will give you survivorship. The Joint Registry uh, now is 15 years of data. You've got the ODEP rating, and the um, NICE guidelines recommend a 10A star. Um, and you also can mention your experience. So this is the hip uh, replacement that you've been trained with. Um, the ODEP, we're not going to go into the details of it, but you can check it on their website. Uh, and a 10A star means that there's 10 years of evidence. And A star means that it has um, fulfilled a... Uh, a, a benchmark of less than 5% revision rate in 10 years. Um, he picked a cemented hip, and with all cemented hips, the revision rate in 15 years in the N, uh, NGR is 5.4%. Uh, he picked a, a metal on poly, which is 54 The ceramic on poly is a bit less, and he acknowledged that, but he said that the difference is marginal, and that... Uh, uh, both are doing really well and because of cost implementations, uh, her being also a 70 year old, he was more inclined towards a metal on poly. Um, so you need to know if you are, for example, in a younger patient and you want to use a hybrid, you need to also be aware of the um, uh, survivorship rates with the hybrid. Just pick your implant basically and know the numbers. Um, this is another group of patients if you're less than 55 years old. Um, numbers are better with a hybrid, particularly ceramic on poly or ceramic on ceramic. Um, then he, he uh, quoted the numbers for the uh, implant he's going to use, which is the contemporary uh, flanged cup with the Exeter stem, which again has excellent survivorship rates. And uh, he also mentioned that he will be using a 32 head, which is also doing very well on the NGR. Um, when he was asked about the approach, he mentioned uh, why he picked that approach. So he mentioned that he has good experience with it and he mentioned some evidence behind it. So I think, I think he, he really deserves a good mark in this and uh, I think this is an ideal answer. Well done, okay. This brings us to another question about consenting a patient uh, for a hip replacement. We covered part of it, but, but let's say if in three minutes you want to consent a patient for a hip replacement, um, what would you say? Would you like to try that, uh, Ahmed? So when I'm consenting this uh, pleasant lady, I'll say that the surgical option we are proposing is uh, the total hip replacement. However, there are other options to be uh, considered, like the conservative treatment and the physiotherapy and to do nothing about it. If you are to consider um, surgery, this will involve a cut on the back of your uh, hip. will basically get down to your, through a safe interval, get down to the, to the bone, to the joint, cut out the head of the bone and remove the, uh, remove the surfaces of the bones and then implant the new um, hip replacement in, and then we close again in, in, um, in layers. The intended benefits of this operation, the reason we're offering you this operation is that we believe that this operation will improve your quality of life. It will get rid of the majority of the pain. However, some residual pain might, might still be there. It will also improve your um, ability to do your daily activities. However, there are complications. To the there are no surgery without complications. So the complications you need to be aware of are general complications, and this includes the medical side of things and anesthetic risks, which my anesthetic colleague will explain more in more details about. When it comes to the risks of uh, the local risks of uh, of the surgery, this includes blood clot in the leg, which might travel to your lung. The incidence of that happening is quite high but the majority of the patients go asymptomatic and asymptomatic and don't have any problems with that. We'll be giving you blood thinners uh, to try to avoid that happening, to reduce the risks, but not completely avoid that happening. The, the risk of infection around one to two percent. Again, depending on how severe the infection is, we might just have to give you some antibiotics. We might mean more surgeries. The, the risk of uh, dislocation is around two uh, percent. We do every possible thing we can do in terms of the surgical approach and, uh, and the way we implant the components to try to avoid that risk. There's 
up to 5% risk of having uh, a limb length discrepancy, so that your leg might be shorter or longer than the other side. And again, from a technical point of view, we try as much as possible to avoid that happening. And if in case it happens, the majority of the patients will just uh, have only less than two centimeter difference, and they'll be able to uh, get away with a shoe, uh, uh, with a shoe lift. However, in less than 1%, the difference would be more than two, uh, two centimeters, and in which case we might have to um, address it in a surgical uh, manner. Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much yeah. it. Yeah, that's good. I think you could just go say that there are other less common things like nerve injuries, vessel injuries, uh, um, uh, just just mention all the other things there, but yeah, I think you you did uh, very well. What do you think, Big? Yeah, <clears throat> I think uh, um, Ahmed's covered it all. Um, um, starting with the explaining the procedure in lay terms to the patient, which makes them aware of what is going to happen uh, with their own body and what to expect. Um, again, to highlight the benefits um, and make sure that it matches the patient's expectations from surgery. Uh, so that we're not just doing something that they that would not offer them what they need, um, and going through the complications, um, the most important and the most commonly met in practice, uh, and then moving yourself towards the least uh, that we see. Yep, I think that's good. I mean, the only thing he could have added is, is mentioned, you know, that incidents that you mentioned earlier is that 95% of the time things go fine and patients are happy with the outcome. I think we just said it so much that Ahmed forgot to mention it. But yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> I think I think it's important because uh, in that sense, yeah, you, you you generally tell the patient that this is a successful procedure, um, and it's not a, a type of procedure we try, um, and we're not sure about the results. No, we know for solid and for sure that it's a good procedure. It's a good operation uh, in most of the people, and it does uh, the trick. Yep. Perfect. Sometimes there are problems and these are the things we'll discuss with you. Perfect.